Hello, beloved. This is Pastor Brad coming to you today with just a short message. It is, I think, self-evident that in our culture, um, things have uh, changed quite a bit. There's been some drastic changes over the last uh, few years. And uh, the skepticism, the uh, lack of trust um, that is more prevalent in our everyday life. One of the ways that this is obviously uh, being exhibited in our culture is the feeling that just church is not that important. Now, the church has been under attack since the 1960s. When I say church, I mean the gathering of Christians, not any one particular building or, or denomination or even the organization of church as a whole. I mean the gathering of Christians. That's what the word church means. It means assembly. And Jesus says, I will. He established his assembly. And he built it on the rock that he is Christ. He says, I will build, uh, I will build my assembly or my gathering, my church, on this fact that I am the Son of God, the promised one, the Messiah. Well, the Bible has lots to say about church. First and foremost, it's Christ's church, not ours, and it is to be important, even though it can be hard. I'm not going to sit there and lie to you and say that coming to church uh, or making church a priority in your life is not hard. There's usually one member of your family that doesn't want to go, and sometimes that member is you. In our flesh, we want to stay home, or we just don't want to deal with that one particular person that we're upset with or is upset with us. Or maybe we've got something else on our conscience, or maybe there's just something else we would rather do. Whatever the reason, don't take it from me as a pastor who has a selfish interest of wanting you to come to church because I want to see you, but take it from Jesus himself. Going to church is obedience. It's that simple. Placing other things, and that we're all going to get sick, and there's going to be uh, events that you cannot help but have to attend. Um, those things, um, but and, and family members, there's, it's going to happen. I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty for having to miss church every once in a while. But I'm talking about making it a priority in your life. One of the ways you can do that is if you do travel, attend church where you travel to. Meet with the family of God. Another way is just don't allow other things to come in front of in your priority list attending church. It's important. And it's important. And God doesn't tell us to do things that are, that are ultimately bad for us. He has reasons he tells us to do them. And it's important to our spiritual health. It's important to our sanctification. If for no other reason that we are obeying Christ. But there are lots of other reasons than that. And I want to explore those. So I'm going to create a series of these little short videos to talk about just the importance of church. The importance of coming together and gathering as Christians. Today I'd like to focus on on the overall, I think the overreaching, overall, um, more direct passage in Hebrews, Hebrews 10, starting in verse, I know there's a glare on my glasses, you just have to focus on the scripture instead of me. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter, we enter together. This passage starts off addressing all of the brethren and saying that we have the boldness to enter together where the holiest the holiest realm the presence of god we are given that by jesus christ he went to be with the father and sent the holy spirit to reside within us so that when we come together we are the temple of god not the building but the people the individual people gathering in the same room the holiest, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 20, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God. He's comparing the temple 
which people would come to, the physical temple in Jerusalem, with the new temple, which is the house of God. And we have a high priest. We are all made priests and kings by Jesus Christ, but we have a high priest that rules over us and intercedes for us. Let's continue to look. Verse 22, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, that drawing near means to each other and to, uh, because it ref- directly references the house of God, but it also means drawing near to God himself, the holiest. We're drawing near, but we're doing it together. You see, as we draw near to the Lord, we cannot help but draw near to one another. The greatest commandment in the Bible is to love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And Jesus did not stop there. He said the second greatest commandment was like the first, and that was to love each other. I think there are a lot right now trying to focus on that first commandment without seeing it in context of the second commandment. We learn what it is like to love God by loving each other. We begin to understand God's love for us when as we love each other in our flaws and in other people's flaws. Through forgiveness, we understand God's forgiveness. Through kindness, we understand God's kindness. God wants us to understand these things, and so he has told us to gather together. We're not to be hermits living off by ourselves and just focusing on the Lord. No, we are to focus on the Lord together, learning more about him, as we are sanctified through exhorting each other. And look what it says. Um, let's just continue to read. Having, a, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. We cannot consider, we are commanded here to consider one another. We cannot consider one another from afar. Or at least, at the very least, you may be saying, yes, I can. I'm watching this video right now online and I can consider you. But not in a real way. You're not here to argue with me. You're not here. I can't see the expressions on your face. I don't know when I'm reaching you or when you're tuned off, tuned out, or when you're really deeply thinking about something I've said. And vice versa. Am I really caring about you? Do I, am I listening to what you said? We, those things are experienced in the same room with each other. And we all know we can be way more bold when we're anonymous and when we're online than maybe we can when we're in the same room with each other. And we have to recognize that we are humans who love Jesus Christ. The person I'm arguing with is a real person who loves Jesus Christ and has problems in their life and family and, and, and jokes and smiles and loves. Those things can only be experienced in person with one another in the same room. God is wise when he tells us to consider one another. And we can't, even if we could consider one another from afar, we cannot stir each other up with, good, with love and good works. Love. I'm sorry. Many people who have had long-distance relationships know that it's, it's, <laughs> love is really best when you're in the same room. And trying to love and stir up one another from a distance is harder than it is when you just need a hug or a handshake or just to feel the presence of another person with you. Let's continue reading because it does not stop there. It says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. The Bible could not be more clear here. He couldn't have said it in, in the Greek, and, or, trans, or the translators couldn't have translated it any more clear. That this means getting together, assembling ourselves together. Not online, not on a Zoom call. Not I'm saying that those things are sins. They're just not as good. They're not obedience. If that's all you can do, then certainly do that. It's better than not doing it at all. If you miss a Sunday service, sure, turn it, tune in online and catch it. 
but it's still not as good as being in the same room and experiencing the smiles, experiencing the love. Do not forsake, because it is a forsaking. It is a um, forsaking of assembly. That in itself it means a denial of what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to assemble. Make it a priority. Of course you're tired. And the enemy and the flesh is going to put everything it can in the way of doing what you're supposed to do in every area of your life. Right now, he is having success, at least with some, in putting this there. A lot of people have the term organized religion. And of course, that term doesn't make any sense when you say, well, what other, what other kind of church can there be? <laughs> Chaos? <laughs> the organized religion, of course it's going to be organized. It must be organized. In fact, the Bible spends a lot of time in the New Testament writing about the fact that it should be organized and how to organize it. But that, in a sense, is just an excuse. Regardless of how real the problems may be in your local church, it's still just an excuse not to obey Christ. It can't get better. You can't make it better without being there. The love is not going to get greater in any local church unless the members of that community go to it and love on each other. You can't fix church by staying away from it. And you're ordered by Christ, by your King, to assemble together. It's that simple. It's it acknowledges, Paul acknowledges here, uh, we think Paul wrote Hebrews, but regardless, whoever wrote Hebrews acknowledges here in the, in the very verse 25 that many are forsaking the assembly. But he says, look, you can't exhort one another if you're doing that. Look at the rest of the verse. As time goes by, it becomes more important. He ends with, by saying this, so much more as you see the day approaching. We are way closer. We are two, almost 2,000 years closer to Christ's return than when this was written. And so church should be 2,000 years more important to continue to attend than it was when this was written in the first century. Do not forsake the assembly. Come together and love on each other. I hope you turn, tune in for the rest of these messages, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.